Welcome to the Love and Lattes podcast, a coffee lover's guide to good vibes, books, rom-coms, and everything in between. Now grab some coffee. Hey everyone, and let's I'm Jeff chatting. Beasley. I'm the director of Never Been Christ and Santa Summit, and you are listening to the Love and Lattes podcast. Thank you so much for joining me today. You've had a big, you know, week, a couple of weeks ago, big weekend with two movies airing back to back, Santa Summit and Never Been Chris, obviously, but you've directed many, many other movies in this kind of genre. I was looking at your IMDb and for listeners who don't know, like Christmas Cookie Catastrophe and Holiday Date, it's one of my favorites. So you're definitely accomplished. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's been a uh, really remarkable run with my relationship at Homer. I, I keep pinching myself every day when I'm thinking, you know, when's this going to end? And it just seems to get you know more adventurous and better and better. And uh, yeah, it was a big weekend. Never been Chris to, uh, and and Santa Summit were two two of my favorites for sure. So much fun to shoot. So very different films, but very similar in a lot of ways as well. Yes. Okay. So I was actually. I was going to save this question for later, but I feel like it's the perfect follow-up. When I watch the Santa Summit, there is so much energy throughout the entire film. I felt like you were actually at like one of those conventions, but then Never Been Chris was like more intimate and had a lot more like conversational, like quiet moments. So definitely two very different films, but both equally wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, they were, they were actually shot back to back. Um, Santa Summit was shot first in the late winter or early spring here in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Yeah, that was that that script came in and it was like, holy mackerel, they want to make a movie about a three friends in a in an evening of bar hopping with thousands of Santas. Great. Okay. Uh let's do it. And Chris came in and I read that script and it was like, okay, they want to make a a movie about two girls who essentially almost break up. Uh, their friendship over, uh, you know, uh, a boy, but really it's not about that. It's about all the history and, and issues they've had together uh, in their friendship. But yeah, very two very different movies, but I think two very unique movies and satisfying movies. Absolutely. For you as a director and just like for audiences to have kind of a variation in styles uh, because like back to back to back four movies you know four nights in a row it's so nice to like one night have this and the next night be like whoa so different well i look at it like this i mean i the first movie i directed for hallmark was a movie called the christmas club with uh, elizabeth mitchell and cameron matheson and that was very much a very traditional hallmark love story and i love that movie so much and i learned so much about that movie and myself and, and and how this how this how this machine of Hallmark works. But three years later, or coming up four years later, I'm really blessed to be a part of the evolution of the creative. And you know, I don't think that I don't think that Chris or Santa Summit would have been made four years ago. I just think it was too outside the box and too outside the thinking of the network at the time. And so I really feel that I'm a part of a, a really beautiful cultural renaissance that's going on at Hallmark right now, um, that we are making movies like this. And I kind of look at it like Christmas dinner, you know, like countdown to Christmas is like Christmas dinner. It's a big feast. There's going to be 40 movies and at Christmas dinner. There's hopefully 30 or 40 dishes. Do we really want 40 servings of turkey? No, we want parsnips and we want the jellied salad and we want a little bit of everything. And you know, I, I, I'm watching as well as, 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 as the viewers of the movies that are coming out. And I'm so pleased and proud of my friends and colleagues for such a different, you know, bouquet of, of movies they're putting out. I mean, the movies on the weekend were fantastic, I thought. I thought, you know, Christmas Island was great. I thought that the Heidelberg movie was fantastic. It's, you know, it's, it's just really, I think the viewers need some variety in, in the topics and and, and, and genres per se, some are funny, some are a little more serious, but at the end of the day, they all have that same Hallmark brand, Hallmark heart. I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. I mean, I'm a fan of the variation. I mean, they've, Hallmark's been doing this for years and years. And so, and then the world's, you know, evolving as it is. So it's so welcome. And I mean, the scripts bringing in these different styles. I mean, how fun for you, like you're saying, being like associated with Hallmark for a number of years now, like to get to do something a little bit different. Yeah, no, it's it's exciting. Um, 
you know, it's interesting. Chris had a very mixed reaction. Um, I think that a lot of the, the critics and podcasters and people really liked the movie and, and, and kind of got it. I think some of the more seasoned viewers were a little confused by it. They, they were, but the best tweet I read about about it was a viewer who wrote, you know, I, I just I just didn't get it, but my daughter and all her friends loved it, so I didn't say anything while we were watching it. And to me, there is a hope that we're always trying to bring in more viewers. And, you know, my son is 18 and his, his girlfriend and their friends, they love Hallmark movies. And, you know, for example, they loved Santa Summit and they loved, loved, loved Chris. Uh, and I think that that's showing that we're trying to attract younger viewers. And there's nothing against our, our, our tried and true viewers. We love you and we're making, we're making movies for you. But... We're trying to we're trying to open the door and get as many people to the party as possible that that can 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 you know embrace the spirit of what we're trying to do completely and bringing in someone like hunter king who's on the younger side um kind of appeals to that generation i mean the santa summit was just so different i don't think there's been another hallmark movie quite like it and you did such a fabulous job as a director just like taking us through this journey and it i mean it felt like you were literally going from place to place with these characters and the characters was were so well thought out and it's the acting i mean everything it was such a good movie yeah sometimes 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 there's just a lightning in a bottle that happens and i feel like with that one russell wrote a very unique script we had uh, a wonderful, wonder, wonderful exec at uh, Hallmark named Camden Simmons, who just championed this project. I had an amazing executive producer, Jennifer Aspen, who's also a great actor, who's coming out in Hall at the Holly sequel with Lacey. And I had amazing partners here in Winnipeg, uh, producers named Ian uh, Dimmerman and Lisa Cicchelli. So when you get everyone in the room together and, and they all sort of have a similar vision or say, you know, understanding of what we're trying to accomplish. And for me, Santa Summit was very much a spectacle movie. The research I did on these, on these Santa cons, as they're called, I mean, this is like hundreds and thousands of people that show up to them. And it's, it's one night of, of, you know, fun and debauchery and, 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 and spirit and all of that. Um, obviously we stayed away from the debaucherous side of Cap, uh, Santa con, but, what we want to try to encompass was community, uh, you know, a reason for the season and friendship. And, and this was a catalyst that got these three girls finally together to go out for one night that inevitably changes all of their lives for the better. And it's because of Christmas and because of the season. But to your point, it's, it's everyone involved in the movie sort of saw the same thing, which was we need more extras than we normally have in these movies. We want them to be all dressed with their own version of Santa. We want, uh, you know, a variety of really wonderful locations that are somewhat aspirational. I mean, I wanted audiences to be watching the movie going like, oh, I wish I was at that piano bar. Or, oh, man, I wish I was line dancing there. And, or I wish that I was walking the streets with all these hundreds of other people. And uh, I, think, I think we accomplished that. Uh, I would say you did. Yeah. I mean, talking about like the technical side of things, I was thinking throughout, I mean, the sheer number of extras and like literally every single scene, um, once they finally get to the Santa convention was wild. Like for Hallmark, you'd never see that many extras like continuously. I mean, that must've been um, a bit of like a, you're a wrangler trying to wrangle all the cattle together. <laughs> I had an amazing assistant directors on this that did such a great job. Great uh, extras casting the costumers on this, I thought, I thought what they did, not only with uh, the three leads, uh, but with all of the, because there's different levels to the background, right? There's, there's the leads, then there's the first layer, which are the ones that are right behind the leads that oftentimes were costumed by like the costumers from the movie. And then there were all the people in the background that either brought their own stuff or were, uh, you know, helped out by extras casting. But you know, when I watch the movie, it's like the attention to detail that was put into all that stuff and the originality and the differences, because it could have been, you know, 500 of this exact same Santa suits shipped from some factory overseas. And that wasn't the case. There was, there was really some artistry put into the tapestry and textures of, of the wardrobe, which I think really adds to the overall punch of the movie. 
Oh, absolutely. Everyone did such a good job on their parts to make it all come together in such a nice, like wrapped bow. Like also speaking like artistically, I don't, I mean like this movie and then really uh, your other movie as well, but there was a moment when they were at the silent disco and they see Hunter's character dancing by herself. And it's like the way the cinematography was in that particular scene. I thought it was so unique for Hallmark Channel. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, and they're, they're very much um, supportive of this. They're, 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 the channel is very much, I feel like pushing, pushing for us to be creative, pushing for us to, to move the needle a little bit with the visuals, which is great because maybe four years ago, that wasn't quite the case. It was, there was a very kind of standard formula that was, was kind of expected to follow, but I feel like now it's like what best serves the story and go for it. And so, yeah, like the silent disco was a perfect example of those low angle shots and the slow motion and the skinny shutter I used, all that. So even the, even the way we use sound, like through the headphones, outside the headphones, um, you know, the fact they, they, they went and got the brand new share song for that, for that scene was, was amazing. I mean, everyone was incredibly committed to making, you know, this movie the best it could be. It was fabulous and i think the risk definitely paid off because i have like a little poll out there for my own followers and everyone almost every single person listed the santa summit is one of their top three favorites so far this year so uh big applause to everybody thanks i mean you know it's it's really not a contest i'm we're we're, we're a part of a, a bigger family of these 40 movies and we're glad that uh i'm glad that we were able to serve a dish at the dinner that people enjoyed that's all like a, a spicier, unexpected dish that um, sure. everyone ended up really liking. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that, you know, I, I come from a comedy background. I directed a lot early in my career, a lot of episodic half hour sitcoms. And that's really where I cut my teeth. So for me, that's really my safe spot. And I think that what I, I if you look at my movies, the evolution of them, I've certainly tried to inject more of my sense of humor and my my passion for comedy in them whenever possible. To do that, you need the right people and you need the support. And I do have that support at Hallmark and, and the producers that I've worked with all like my sense of humor. And, you know, like when you look at the cast of the Santa Summit, those are those aren't just actors. Those are all dear friends of mine that I've watched develop beautifully over the last eight years. I mean, a lot of them eight years ago were, were barely starting out or even thinking about getting into acting. And when I look at the evolution of Stephanie Sai, who played Stella, and I look at the evolution of Amy Groening, who played um, Ava, they're, they're, they're ready for prime time, you know? And, it, and, and, and I love them because they're, they're fearless, they go for it, they, they really act first and think later, if that makes sense. They always are trying to find the humor and the humanity. And for me, that just makes my job I don't want to say easy, but enjoyable because I know that they're working as hard as I am to really find those moments. Um, Hunter, Hunter King, I mean, again, I mean, who knew she was that funny? She's hilarious in the movie and self-deprecating and just fantastic. So yeah, you need a team and, and we certainly had a great team on that one. That's awesome. Um, you can tell it just was such an enjoyable viewing experience um just awesome and of course we have to touch on never been chris which came out the night before so santa summit was a sunday never been chris was a saturday and um we already kind of mentioned like the vibe and the tone and feel was a little bit different i guess like when you're approaching two incredibly different films and you said you filled them back to back what do you do to like kind of like get in that mindset of like just the whole overall tone changing well, again, I, you have to go to the story. I mean, it, essentially, it's it's you go into the script, and and uh, Joelle Boynkin wrote that script, and I've worked with her before. She wrote a movie, actually, I think it aired last night on Hallmark, is a classic called um, uh, Project Christmas Wish. So I've worked with her before, and I'm a huge, huge fan of her writing. You know, when I first read the script, I was surprised. I thought this is really outside the box for Hallmark. This is really pushing a lot of boundaries. It's not what people are going to be expecting at all. And then when Tyler agreed to come on and do the show, now that becomes a whole other animal because Tyler Hines is in your movie. And Tyler has, as you know, uh, a legion of 
ravishing fans that watches every move and and are very much beautiful protectors of him. So he was stepping into something that was a little daring for him because he wasn't playing the classic number two. He wasn't playing the, he wasn't sharing, you know, 50% of the screen time with, uh, with the female lead. He was very much, he was very much a number three on the show. Uh, he was playing support to, uh, you know, the two leads, the two girls in their relationship. And I was a little worried about it at first. And when I first talked to him, he said, you know, that's, that's entirely the reason why I took the part because I love the script so much. And I thought it was so great and so funny and so different. And I, and I see what I have to do in this and I'm excited to do it. And, you know, some of the scenes he's in, like the scene where he, he's sneak eating the salmon. I mean, we were, we were, it was hard to, to get the take because the crew was laughing so hard at his approach to that. And I don't want to give anything away, but I'm sure most people have seen the movie by now. I mean, when he first, when we re rehearsed it and I watched him do it, I said, what are you doing? Like, what, what is your approach here? And he said, I want to play it like, like I'm an alcoholic taking a drink that I know I shouldn't be taking. And I'm so ashamed yet love it so much. And it was, to me, it was like, great. And it was so hilarious and so funny and poignant and perfect and her reaction. And I mean, it's funny, that's a scene that, that got so much reaction online from people like, wow, he's a liar and oh, how dishonest. It's like, guys, it's a comedy. <laughs> it's a comedy. We're trying to be funny. We're not, you know, it's, it's, it's a heightened reality is what it is. I mean, how do we know that his character hadn't been on a date in many moons or gone out to dinner with someone else who happened to order a dish of meat and he's like here's my opportunity to just see what i'm missing it's funny you know and it's like you know the, a lot of, a lot of people are like talking about how immature the girls become well, that, that's part of the comedy i mean i was at a i was at a high school i was at a hundred year reunion of the school i went to and there was like all the grades from you know like classes from the 70s to the to the 2000s and you know, it was strange to see how people reacted to this reunion. It was like, at first everyone was like, oh, I've moved on. I'm, I'm a different person now. But by the end of the evening and after libations and whatever else, it was like back to the old cliques and, and, and reverting back to, you know, a period in people's lives, which I think is incredibly, incredibly uh, formative and 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 impactful and i think for them it was like this moment where they kind of like relive their they go back and revert and kind of relive their their youth and, and deal with some trauma or something <laughs> throughout this journey right um i mean there's a lot i mean the thing about that script is there's a lot going on there's a lot going on with them there's a lot going on with chris there's a lot going on with their you know past history and how they feel about how they were represented or treated in high school and there's a lot going on with their families I mean, there's a lot of deep things that go on in this movie so the approach was well, let's let's try to let's try to be lighthearted about it let's try to be let's try to be humorous about um tackling this material as opposed to making a straight ahead drama about it which i don't think is the right approach at all it was so funny like especially when the character of liz kind of realized that there's some uh, fish eating going on and she like runs off the way she ran off. I just thought was so funny. I mean, like, it's just like the little things like that, that really uh, made the movie even funnier. Yeah. Well, that was, that was by design. Those were, those were very, I mean, I'm guilty of that. I was like, you know, that, that line where she, where she spots him. It's like, she's takes so much pleasure in catching him. And, you know, she says, well, why do you reek like fish? And then she goes running off like a kid going to tell. And she has so much joy when she tells Naomi about what she's witnessed. And Naomi's like, so? You know, it's, but it's, to me, that's really funny. <laughs> it's so funny. And like part of, I mean, any movie that kind of has like a high school reunion thing, like Romeo and Michelle's high school reunion, anything like that. It's like the immaturity is kind of the fun part. Yeah. Like you, you're, you're grown up now. You've been out of high school 15 years, but then you get back with your high school friends and it's like nothing has changed. Everyone's exactly like they were 15 years ago exactly you know like the whole bit about the ugly sweaters like sitting in that hot bar refusing to take their jackets off because they don't want to look stupid in front of these cool kids from high school it's like who cares when you're 35 years old like you know you're wearing an ugly sweater but no they they'd sooner boil to death than 
then you know reveal themselves as uh you know a loser to these these guys right that was so funny they finally got to take the, their jackets off and it was just like see the comedy the little things it was so perfect uh, i just loved it well thank you oh you're welcome okay so like we've compared and contrasted these movies a bit so i'm curious what from each movie did you have like a favorite moment for you maybe like either actually directing it making it or when you finally saw the um, end result of both um i think that for me my favorite moment my favorite moment in in santa's summit is uh stella's live performance at the piano bar it was just, it was great because there was you know most of the all the cast were in that scene at some point you know ben and his brother the three girls rodrigo uh, stella obviously the piano player uh jonathan who i think is so fantastic in the movie i just i just took i was so happy to see her get up and 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 give that performance um a little side note all the music in in the movie is is recorded live it's none of it is lip synced or dubbed or anything that's all live recordings off the floor that she performed in front of those audi that audience so um in your mind you sort of see how you want this scene to go how you want it to look how you want it to sound in this case it was just the perfect culmination of those things coming together you know, she had to sing Jingle Balls, or J not Jingle Balls, Jingle Balls is from the from Never Meet Chris, Jingle Bells, <laughs> I keep thinking Never Meet Chris, she had to sing Jingle Bells, and how do you make that interesting, and you know that arrangement they did is, you know, um, it was great, and I think that a lot of people really responded to that scene in the movie, so that was certainly one I, I loved in that. Chris, I don't know, like, the Jingle Ball scene in, in Never Been Chris was, was really great, I thought. Um, Naomi's speech and the kiss with uh, Janelle and, and, and uh, Tyler was fantastic. All the friends coming together and sort of coming together. And, and their final scene where they, you know, not break up and not get back together. It's kind of this moment of like, we're going to be together, but in a different, in a different path that sort of is better for both of us. Uh, I thought was really kind of came together nice and a nice finish to the movie. Oh, definitely. Both had kind of grand endings um, in their own ways. So it was great. Just uh, definitely awesome, awesome movies. I'm so glad that Hallmark greenlit these and that you were a part of them. Well, thank you. Oh, of course. Um, well, I would like to kind of, um, before we finish up, now that the strikes have ended and people can get back to work, do you have any other projects in the works that you can share details on? Well, I actually have one more movie coming out this year on December 21st on uh, Hallmark Movies and Mysteries called uh, Miracle in uh, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. It's on December 21st. It stars um, Laura Vandervoort and Ben Ayers. Very, very different movie than the other two. Um, maybe a little more traditional Hallmark than the other two, but nonetheless, incredibly enjoyable, incredibly moving. My wife saw it, she cried twice and said it was her favorite movie of this season for the movies I put out. So I think it's, you can file it under the category now for something completely different, but maybe not as bombastic as Santa Summit or as uh, eclectic as Chris, but certainly just as emotional and poignant and, 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 and funny. So I hope people tune into that on December 21st. Yes, December 21st, right before the big day, big Christmas day. So that's yeah. perfect timing. <laughs> yeah. And the new year, there's lots of things percolating. I have a musical I've been working on with Hallmark that I'm really excited about. Um, we're hopefully going to shoot that in the new year. Um, and who knows what they've got cooking up in their, in their genius minds. I'm sure there's many, many interesting projects, hopefully, that'll cross my desk that I'll be more than happy to uh, get involved with in the new year. Oh, absolutely. So musical. That's so exciting. Can't wait to learn more details, um, hopefully mm -hmm. soon. Mm -hmm. So do you have a favorite like movie musical? Um, I don't really have a, I'm not, my, my, my wife is a, my wife is a musical director. So I, I see a lot of live musicals more than anything. So I'm a, I'm a fan of the stage. I saw Book of Mormon um, not too long ago and I was, I was, I couldn't believe that got <laughs> was actually a thing and it, it, I laughed my butt off on that and love the music and the rest of it so um yeah I mean obviously uh La La Land is fantastic and um 
yeah a musical it's gonna be fun yes oh my gosh i know people have kind of been asking for something like along those lines for a while so very cool very cool um well we will finish up with rapid fire questions okay, okay. what is the last show you binge watched last show i binge watched was believe it or not it was breaking bad from the beginning yeah there I, were quite a few seasons in that yeah i hadn't i hadn't watched it for a while and i and i went back and rewatched it but um that I also the bear I loved. Um, I also loved uh, Fleischman's in Trouble. I binge watch. I binge watch those three. Who's in that last one you mentioned? It's not Claire Danes, is it? Yeah, Claire Danes, Lizzie oh, Kaplan. Okay. Yeah. yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Cool, very cool. Um, and do you have a go-to coffee drink? Uh, Americano. Okay, classic. And do you have a favorite like holiday sweet treat? Mm, anything with peanut butter. I know that sounds weird, but I'm not very much a peanut butter guy. So like peanut butter square or anything like that, I, I, I really like. I've also really gotten into schmoo cake lately. That's a new thing. Uh, I love it. Wait, it's like what is angel that? Food. What, it's called schmoo. It's, a, it's like an angel. It's a version of an angel food with whipping cream, and it's very light and not too sweet. It's, it's delicious. Wow, that sounds fun. A schmoo cake. <laughs> I like it. Um, and then finally, um, where is a place that you would like to visit that you have not yet traveled to? Um, New Zealand, Australia, that area of the world. I've been as far as Hawaii, but I haven't been all that way. It would be interesting. Japan. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, have you, do you watch like men in kilts or anything on stars? No. Okay, well, it's like um, Sam Hewen and Graham McTavish from Outlander. They go to New Zealand, do like a four, it's four episodes, 30 minutes. Um, but you kind of get to explore New Zealand. So um, oh, maybe you should watch that. I, I will. Thanks for the recommendation. Yeah. Absolutely. It's comedic. Um, but thank you so much for joining me today, Jeff. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Great. Thanks so much. Take care. Of and thanks course, for thank you. I appreciate it. Of course. Have a nice day. Okay, bye. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you can be notified of all the new episodes. I truly appreciate your support. Thank you so much for listening to the Love and Lattes podcast. Have a great day.